Hello and welcome in this new video tutorial in which I want to show you a pretty amazing piece of software called Realistic Paint Studio. The goal of this software is to emulate traditional medium in order to paint or draw. And uh, to be honest with you, I never seen something that great. I've been using Rebel and uh, also, of course, Krita and MyPaint and other uh, 2D programs, but uh, this one is probably the best brush engine that I've ever seen in the industry. Before moving on, I just want to say that this is absolutely not a sponsored video. I just really like this piece of software and I want to share it with you. So let's click on the create new button to create a new piece of artwork. And as you can see by default, you have three types of setup that you can use. We're going to use the drawing just to explore a bit the options. As you can see, you have different pieces of paper that you can use. You can switch the different uh, layouts uh, and by clicking on, on the icons, and you can also switch the type of paper that uh, you can use. Uh, let's, for instance, take the notebook and you can click on the OK button to start uh, your drawing adventure. As you can see, by default, you in this mode, you have um, a pencil uh, that you can use, a mechanical pencil. You also have different colored pencils that are pretty amazing. And basically, you can uh, see um, a small preview of what the brush, uh, how the brush is reacting. You can also click on this uh, button in order to replay the preview and you can see how the brush looks like in motion, which is actually pretty cool. You also have the ballpoint paint uh, that is quite shockingly uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, so you can press the space bar to navigate around. You can press control space to zoom in and out. If you want, you can press Alt space to rotate the canvas. And if you want to reset everything, like in many software, you can press the home key uh, and uh, you reset your view. If you press end, you will zoom fit the canvas to the maximum uh, size. And one thing that I like to do uh, in some setups is I like to go in the preferences and I like to change the, the background. So uh, it's less distracting for the eyes. So let's go with something like uh, a dark wood like this. You can also change in the preferences, by the way, uh, different settings that are pretty self-explained, uh, self-explanatory, sorry. And uh, the first thing I had to do is to switch the windowed mode uh, because actually uh, I have a, another monitor and I want to uh, I want to just move the, the window so maybe the first thing you will have to do uh, when launching the software is to use the, the windowed mode or uncheck the windowed mode to have a full screen experience. You can change also a bit the, the pressure in my case I want to, to increase the pressure um, or actually in fact uh, if you lower it down it will be more sharp if you if you press light and that's what I'm going to to go with and um, you can also have the colors here and they are actually um, organizing the color in a more realistic way uh, meaning that the color will be a bit more saturated uh, than in other software and uh, as you can see the gradient here uh, doesn't look the same as in Photoshop or Krita or other uh, digital software you can also, by the way, click on the cog icon here to change the picker size and to get uh, an, uh, an, an auto, another sorry, uh, picker, a triangle one. And this option allows you to uh, hide the color uh, when, you, when you draw. And to make it reappear, you can click on this icon there. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this option and uh, I'm going to lower a bit uh, the size of the picker. Um, if you press tab, you can also go into uh, um, a more uh, UI-free mode uh, and um, pressing tab again will uh, give you back the, the rest of the UI. Um, this is a pretty simple uh, layer system. As you can see, let me draw something. You can just add your layers. Uh, you can hide and, and, and make them reappear like normal. You can change the opacity. If you want to merge two layers together, you can press Ctrl E like in a lot of software. 
um, if you want to uh, move some layers, so let's, let's add some layers, you, you will have to pick on the very top of the layer. This was a bit disorienting at the beginning uh, because I, I'm used to select to, 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 to click on the center. If you want to rename, you just double click on the name, by the way. Um, and if you want to remove some uh, layers, you can do that. This is going to clear the layer. So for instance, I have this. I don't want to remove the layer, but just clear the um, what's on it. I can do that. This is pretty cool too. And you have some options here. Rename, delete, create folders, preserve the layer opacity. Uh, if you want to, to, to for instance, let's, let's do that. I'm going to do some hashing like that. And I'm going to select a red color. If I click on preserve layer opacity, you can see that I'm, I will only paint in uh, the, the, in the, the, the strokes that I've made, that I've already made. So I can uh, erase this layer. And you can see that I cannot paint anymore because I've preserved the layer opacity. So in this case, I, I click again on it in order to make it uh, to make it work uh, as normal as usual. So one other thing that I can do is I can uh, store different uh, my my tools, and the tools are located here. So as you can see, uh, you have different box or artistic or artist box toolbox with uh, painting with the. Uh, the ballpoint paint with the, the, the different uh, mechanical pencil and the real pencil, 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 sorry. And you can see how amazing the feel is for uh, the, the pencil. Uh, you can zoom by pressing control space, by the way. You can rotate the canvas by alt, sp alt space if you want to. Um, and you can uh, press shift, um, shift, Alt to pick, or just Alt actually will work too. Um, and you can press Control uh, and uh, Alt in order to change the size, as you can see, of the, the current tool. And Control Z, of course, will work uh, to undo. And you can press the end key to fit the canvas back to, to the whole screen, or just Home to make the canvas. Uh, back to its default location. So if you rotate by pressing Alt and Space, you can always press the Home key uh, to make it work back. So you have different types of ball ballpoin paint, uh, mechanical pencil, sorry. So as you can see, uh, it works uh, pretty much like a real one, actually. The, the, the strokes you're making with this tool are uh, really awesome. i never seen something like that. Again, I need to say it again. And um, when you press F1, um, F, F4, F, F1, F2, and F3, and F4, you can see that you are activating different parts of the UI. So let's, for instance, open the toolbox and let's uh, watch another tool, such as the marker. So you can see that the marker, they are basically like uh, real Posca. Uh, or real, um, I don't remember the brand, but copy, uh, uh, Copic, Copic marker. And uh, they basically look like very realistic. You can see how the, the textures are blending with the rest of the, of, the, of the paint that is already on the page. So this is like super cool. Um, Let's remove that and let's open the toolbox again. You have, uh, so those brushes are uh, premium brushes that you can buy uh, and you will see how cool they work, uh, how great they are. So you have like different uh, aspects for those, those brush. So they are more fancy brush, I will say. Uh, so let's open again the toolbox and let's pick the realistic um, fountain, fountain uh, brush. So as you can see, you have a more inky type of brush that works pretty cool too by default. Let's open the toolbox again. You have like this brush that is more uh, like uh, um, I don't remember. I don't recall the name, but uh, it works a bit like a pentel. Uh, 
but more uh, more aggressive I would say uh, but it's really cool to see that and uh, let's open the brush again you have like this is like a, a very special sparkle brush as you can see but I think you can get pretty creative with those kind of brush and honestly uh, I didn't spend a lot of time using those brushes but I know that uh, that uh, they look pretty cool so you can see how it works so let's erase that page let's um, put some favorite brushes uh, below so you can do that by simply um, click on this button and pick the brushes that you or the tools that you use the most so basically um, we are going to see all those tools just before doing that adding them to the favorite so let's uh, let's let's select again the the, the toolbox sorry uh, by clicking either on the tool or F4 and in, in the, the first uh, toolbox you have the ruler and the ruler is actually pretty cool you can just uh, put lines according to the orientation of the line the middle widget will help you to move the line and this one will just rotate align the um, align the ruler and as you can see I can put lines pretty much uh, easily the way I want so let's for instance let's put a perspective let's create a, f a very quick perspective so you can put a line like that just only one actually like that and let's uh, create a single point a single vanishing point like that can rotate it rotate it and you can see how cool and fast this could be you're not actually you're not obliged you're not um, it's not mandatory to be on the on the same point so you can easily rotate your angles and start from your vanishing point I'm not really used to, as you can see, to create those perspective grids with a ruler. Usually I'm doing them by hand as quick sketch. And let's add one more like that and then let's realign the tool with the bottom and I can add some lines on top <laughs> like that. So that's a way to create a perspective grid using this tool. Let's open back the toolbox and uh, let's pick now the compass. So basically you can create circles as you can see, not that hard. Um, uh, you can, let's pick again the, another color. Sometimes you have to press escape if you want to, to leave a tool. Uh, you can press the B key to come back to your brush. Uh, so yes, this tool is pretty easy to understand actually. Uh, as you can see, you can press the shift key to snap it to different angles if you want to. Um, and uh, let's go for the other tools. You have um, this tool which helps you rescale. So let's rescale, rotate, squish, uh, squish and stretch. Uh, your selection you can validate let's console this tool um, you also have the the cut which is a basic uh, eraser that basically will remove what's in the selection that you've made it's like a scissor actually <laughs> and I really like the visual of this you also have the cutter that is basically a lasso tool and if you press ctrl T by the way you can already you can access this uh, realignment tool I would say this transform tool Qu pressing ctrl D you can of course deselect and um, you also have uh, this cutter which is um, a align a box aligned uh, cutter as you can see and still I can transform it and press ctrl D to validate okay for those tools uh, now we are going to add here the I'm going to favorite this one if you want to remove it you can always click back on it 
but I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put the scissors too, because they're pretty useful for the rest. I don't want them, so we'll be okay. Um, I can also add uh, some of the, the pencils here that are pretty amazing. So let's go with that. Let's add the ballpoint pen, ballpoint pen, sorry, the mechanical pencil, the color pencil. Uh, I'm going to uh, go with this one too. Okay. And um, if you press one, two, three, four, etc., you will uh, pick the tools that are actually set up in your um, favorites by the order of the number. So one will be the cutter, two will be the scissors, three the ball paint, etc. etc. You get it, I think. So one other thing that is pretty amazing with this um, this tool is, of course, the um, different brushes that you have in order to, to paint. So let's go with them. So you can see that you have different uh, pen, um, different brush pen, uh, not brush pen, but brushes actually. <laughs> and let's pick that one for instance. And uh, you can, when you paint, see here the colors that you are going to paint. So you pick a color, and the more you pick, you can see the more uh, you will create a. Um, um, how, how is it called? Um, a hole in the color. You can also mix your color in the middle like that. And here, uh, it's not very uh, visible because I think that in my case, I need to pick another brush. So let's pick that one just for a try. And you can see that now uh, we have some paint. I don't know very well why the previous brush was not, uh, was not um, working but you can see how amazing the color will blend together with this uh, with this uh, this brush. So press F4, you also, let's take that one for instance, you can see that in this case, it's, it's just something to light, to create a lighter, a lighter color. Um, by pressing F4, you also have different uh, tools, such as if you want salt to add salt in your, uh, in your image, it, it creates a bit of a grainy look. You can also create leaks uh, with your with your your paint, which is pretty cool. Adds a more traditional effect, but this is really like an effect. It won't replace your your drawing skills. You have different sponge and uh, different uh, papers that help you to blend. As you can see, I can blend like this. You can also take the sponge. It will be much more radical in terms of like how you smudge the paint on the paper on the paper but it is pretty cool too uh, and the eraser usually i'm using uh, uh, the eraser by pressing the e key actually so you 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 have your brush by pressing b and e will be the eraser so you have soft eraser er erasers kneaded erasers and you also have a very hard erasers uh, like that and this one is called sharp eraser, but actually, as you can see, it's not that sharp. So usually I'm going with the, the green one. That is pretty cool. When I say usually, I, I didn't use the software a lot. I used it for two or three hours. But uh, in the trial version, by the way, I just bought it because I think it's really worth the price. But uh, yes, actually, the, the green brush is pretty cool for me. So let's clear that. Let's open the other tools. I think we've seen a lot of tools there. Uh, you can see that those tools were just for lighting, uh, adding some light, uh, but you have more um, broad brushes like that. Uh, but this is uh, actually the, the, the brush that you have for the drawing setup. You also have other setups, so let's go and we are not going to save it. Let's create a new one. You have so the watercolor setup. We've seen a lot of the brush there, but you also have the oil painting. So let's go with the oil uh, painting. Let's pick a, a very wide, um, uh, a very wide canvas. And uh, as you can see here, you have like real oil painting that looks like 
realistic oil actually so here you can create pretty nice concepts actually so I really like the way they manage color uh, with those uh, with those uh, brush engines it's, it looks actually pretty realistic it's, it's, it's quite amazing to see how much effort they've put in the in the in the in the traditional aspect of those brush so with that with those brush you also can have more tools such as uh, more brushes so here you have much more broad brushes um, <laughs> this kind of stuff is kind, kind of funny I'm not no doing anything there it's, it's just uh, like random paint <laughs> just to, to try something to try the colors you can see how you can change uh, the different colors there you have basic colors there that are that are being selected for you that you can switch like that um, and this this software is actually really cool for exploring and for doing concepts uh, and uh, yeah honestly I'm quite convinced by the <laughs> as you can see I'm quite convinced by the the way it looks you also have those tools I don't know how they are called in the in, uh, in English but they can help you create some effects and the more traditional effects you, you can see that you can basically blend your colors they will work with the tilt too so you can tilt and cut let's press F4 again you have like sharp one uh, and you can see how amazing they react and um, what's absolutely great is that you still have your older brushes and you still have um, layers so you can still uh, benefit from the less traditional and more digital way of working combined with a very uh, realistic um, traditional way of uh, doing uh, art so you also on top of that you have here all this whole all the shortcuts sorry uh, that are available you can change them I think or oh, apparently not like that actually oh yeah. let's reput the this shortcut to be E uh, you also have in the settings as we saw um, the different backgrounds that you can change uh, I, don't, I don't know if we saw that actually I don't remember but you have all the, the background that you can change you have different self-explanatory settings here as I said you can change the language that's pretty cool you can export your image uh, basically image will only export the image so let's show you that so I'm going to export this as a PNG you can change the type of, uh, of um, you can change the type of, of uh, file that you want so in this case as you will see it only exported the uh, the image but if you want you can also export uh, the image plus the frame um, so let's go with that so I'm going to uh, override the same image just to show you this hat this added the the frame behind and if you want you can also export this time the frame plus the background so let me show you this is a very special feature of the software when you click there it's going to create a fake environment and you have different ones according to the type of um, of uh, painting that you've chosen so at the beginning you if you choose drawing you will have a very different uh, integration than in watercolor and uh, in um, in uh, uh, in oil sorry so and then of course you can export with this button but we're not going to do that so that's pretty much it for this uh, tour of the software uh, there are some other small features that uh, are here and there but you will pr pretty much discover them it's pretty easy and let's go back here and you can see that you have a, a gallery with different uh, samples but one thing that is pretty cool is that you also have tutorials here so if you want for instance to try recreating those mushrooms you can go step one 
then here you have you are set up with the the right brush uh, not the right scale actually <laughs> but you can uh, redo the redo the the tutorial uh, like that i'm going to do it very quickly just to show you the idea and it's actually a pretty fun way to learn uh, to draw if you're a beginner uh, i really like the idea of this uh, this way of working, of teaching actually. So let's do the fading. I'm going to do it pretty quick just to show you. Oh, actually, they wanted to, me to erase. So you can go back to the previous step, but they are not going to change. No, they are not going to change the. Unfortunately, they are not changing the. The, the shape, the brush back. Here you have to tilt the, the brush pen to find the right orientation. Ah, I cannot get it with my stylus. It depends on the settings that you have. But you can see that it's it's pretty cool to to work with. I don't I, I won't actually do do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you how to create uh, a real piece, but for during this piece, I will go in time lapse mode, so you will see all the the part. If you are not interested, you can of course end this video right there, right now. But uh, I just want to create uh, a piece from A to Z. Just before that, I'm going to show you the watercolor color setup. You can see you have the pretty lo uh, the pretty standard one. You have a notebook again. You have this one that I really like to use, and you have also the sketch pad. Uh, like that, but I, I will select the fine canvas for this um, drawing that I will do, and I'm going to to create the uh, drawing from A to Z uh, in order to conclude this tutorial, and I will do it uh, in a time lapse mode. So feel free to uh, to to put your own music if you want, and to and to draw along with me and to test this software. Um, I hope you enjoyed this quick review of the software. Um, the developers, I think they are actually the developers that are make, that are making Paintstorm Studio, if I'm not wrong. And uh, honestly, they really deserve more attention because uh, the experience drawing in this software is more like a game, actually, for me. It, uh, it's very chill, it's very re relaxing. One thing that they can add, uh, I think that uh, adding sound of the brushes could be a good idea uh, there is one software that is actually doing that it's called storyboarder and uh, it's I, I, I thought at the beginning that it will be it, it will be very annoying but in fact it's quite relaxing if you lower the sound of course um, and uh, I didn't show you but you can import references also uh, if you want uh, in the in the in the layer uh, so here you can add a a reference layer so let's uh, add back the the image that we saved and you, you can see that it's now being referenced here you can place it like that you can see that you have the small icon uh, telling you that and uh, it's actually pretty cool you can also still change the opacity and uh, we cannot draw on a reference layer of course so let's do another one but you 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 have the ability to do that okay so I'm going to go in time lapse mode. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you liked it uh, and see you for uh, a new one. Cheers.